So today is the day that I finally washed the project car. It's been sitting out for too long. We did the repairs on it to make it run better. But now it's time to take care of this horrible, horrible paint, as you can see. It's been caked on. There is a lot of little guests living all over the place. This is actually the part I found, I don't know why, very amusing. On the gas cap cover. A little webbing there. So I've already found some dead bees in here. These little spiders are doing their job. Oh, actually you can see one right now. It's like a episode of Wild Kingdom in here. As you can see, he's got his little bee. He's probably not happy that I'm bugging him, but uh, he's going to be vacated today because uh, I need this car clean. So, take you step by step, show you how to get all this nice stuff out. I'm sure some of your cars aren't this dirty, but again, if they are, well, then uh, I'll show you how to properly get all this dirt off without uh, adding a any additional scratches. And... We'll go from there. First, we're going to do the wheels. Just kind of get those out of the way. So we have our little grate to make sure any of that uh, brake dust doesn't come back into the water. We're going to add some soap. And this is just for the wheels only. We're not doing anything else. So I have a brush that this long brush is going to be for the underside of the car. Uh, while I'm doing the wheels, I'll clean the wheel wells as well. The little wheel woolly and then a, just a different little scrubber that I got at a secondhand store just to reach in the tight places. So we'll go ahead and start this one. put our brushes in there so let them just soak for a minute this isn't going to be what's actually cleaning the wheels uh, of course the soap will help out a bit but it's really more of a lubricant type of thing just to help out now the wheels that you'll see on the car they're really uh, old beat up uh, again they're going to be used more for track use uh, maybe i'll powder coat them in the future but at the moment, it's, uh, it, you know, if they get, as long as they get clean. But I want to show you the proper way to do it. That way, if you have the nicer wheels on your car, your truck, you don't scratch them. Because if you have those really nice painted wheels, powder coated wheels, uh, especially anything like chrome, don't want to scratch that up. So this is the proper way to do it. But uh, we have a cleaning chemical here too. So let's start with the wheels first. So here's the wheel. Like I said, it has a bunch of nicks in it. Uh, it's been damaged. Uh, these were purchase used. So uh, this car originally came with hubcaps. So again, on my end with this specific wheel, uh, just need to get it really just clean. But again, want to show you the proper steps if you have uh, nice wheels on your car. And of course, you don't want to scratch it. So you see that the the longer brush is going to be to get into those tight areas back there the car is dropped as you can see there's really not that much room here so it'll be interesting to get it back there but uh, we'll go ahead and start spraying down the wheel and get it cleaned so I'll let the wheel soak this up for a little bit Same thing with the tire. These tires have not been washed in a long time. Just remember when you're looking for any wheel cleaners, especially if you're just going to a local uh, AutoZone, Target, Walmart, um, 
that it's safe for your type of wheel because uh, you want to make sure it just doesn't have like a strong acid that would <coughs> eat up at your your lovely new wheels so while we let that kind of <coughs> do its thing here we'll go ahead and start back here with the larger brush so you can see it's pretty dirty and this is the reason why we have that grit guard in there because when this goes in here and I'm gonna take some of that dirt off but as it's sinking to the bottom that grit guard will keep everything in place and not coming back into your paint Again, it's so tight in there just because the car so dropped. But you can see all that uh, dirt coming off. Again, the suds helping a lot. Uh, the, the weight of those suds as it's coming down from the inside of the wheel well, it's dropping a lot of that dirt down. Alright, now that we got the wheel well clean. I'll just do the front. So you always want a variety of brushes just because your wheels will have little nooks and crannies. This would be the simple way to clean it uh, if you have the time or it's easy for you to get the wheels off. Of course that's going to be your best bet. That way you can get all the way to the back of it. But you know, most of us had to make it a quick clean just because we don't have all day just to sit here and clean it. But that's why I wait to do these projects when I know I have a little bit more time to dedicate to it. So if they're really dirty, we'll go ahead and kind of wash this down for a second and see what it looks like. So now we have our little wheel brush. This is to get in between all these little tighter areas. The key thing is, again, the reason you have all this soap is it's uh, lubrication. The actual brush is what's taking the dirt brake dust off the wheel. That's why you want to make sure that the soap is there to give it that lubrication, just like a car engine has the lubrication with the oil. So do a kind of a couple runs through, and then you're gonna take it to the bucket, clean it off. If you wanna use the hose and rinse it off every time before you put it back into the wheel, you know, no big deal, as long as it gets that grime off before you go over to the next one. If you have painted wheels, you will see a big difference that you'll have less scratching uh, involved. So. why you want different styles of brushes and things like this because this gets makes my job a lot easier instead of trying to get the bristles in there which they're just not going to get in there so all right so cut through this part my last round through there all right, we'll rinse it off and see what we got.
all right it's still wet so it's gonna be a little bit deceiving on camera but uh, it's big difference now that uh, all the little nooks and crannies are cleaned if I do get this powder coated then you know it'll really stand out next time but for now so that's how you clean a wheel properly take your time make sure you have a lot of soap spray your uh, degreaser or your wheel chemical on it let it sit for a little bit uh, not too long just to kind of start breaking down the grime and grease then use your brushes get all that stuff out of there uh, if it's starting to get they're really really dirty you know you might want to hit it for a bit rinse it out and then do another round of uh, the chemical on there and then rinsing it out with the with the brushes and that way again the whole the whole point of washing the car is when you're doing it besides getting it clean is you're trying to minimize the scratches so that's the number one key to keeping that paint looking good um, so we'll see how bad my paint is once I get all this dirt off of there so let's go to the next step well I'm gonna go ahead and finish all four wheels real fast and then we'll go ahead and uh, move up to the paint all right so now we're done with the wheels so now it's time for the whole car so if you're starting off this dirty we're gonna do the two bucket method so just like it looks there's two buckets you can get them the same size uh, I just happened to buy a smaller one and the Home Depot bucket uh, and what I put inside is just soap a good decent amount of soap uh, what's going to happen with these two buckets is one is going to be for the, which I'm going to use this one, and the blue one. This is where I'm going to dunk the pad after I take it off the car. So we're going to wipe it, wipe the dirt off the car, then I'm going to stick it in this one, in the orange one, rinse it off, get it good in there, get all the stuff off of there. This is going to trap the dirt underneath there and keep it from flying back up. And then once all the dirt's off, I'm gonna stick it into our bucket uh, with the clean water and the clean soap. And this is gonna provide again the lubrication and uh, the soap to go back onto the car so that the uh, mitt doesn't scratch the paint. So this is, if, you're, if you do wash your car at home, this is the basic setup you wanna keep. If you just do this, you'll keep a lot of scratches off your paint. That's why if you've ever seen or taken your car to a car wash um, or also known as a torture chamber for your paint, you'll see when they're washing your car, they only have one bucket. And the first car is gonna go through, your car is coming through, they stick the pad, or in this case, it's probably a bristle brush in the bucket, go back and forth, wipe off your car with it, stick it back in there and do it again and hit the rest of the car as it's coming through your lot. Then, if you stand there long enough, you'll see the next car come right through again. Stick it in the same bucket, swish it around a bit, put that back on the other person's paint, and kind of repeat the process. Now, I want you to just really pay attention if you're standing there while you're working on your car, how many times they stick it in the same bucket, but without ever changing the water, or as we're done with this whole process, you see how much time we're taking, and nothing crazy, but just the time we're taking to use this two bucket method. If you've ever seen a car, and once we take all the dirt off of this one, I know I have swirls and scratches on there, uh, because this car used to be a car, I used to take to the, to the car wash all the time until I really got into uh, the more specifics of detailing. So, we'll get back to this and I'll show you what I mean afterwards. So let's fill up the buckets.
So now that we have our buckets ready, both of them are full of soap, but now we're just gonna go ahead and get all the heavy grime off the car first. And that's just gonna be us using the hose on a strong setting and getting all the dirt to kind of fall off. This is where some of those snow cannons that you see attached to that shoot out a lot of foam. Those use the same concept, just the weight of the foam kind of pulls a lot of those, a lot of the heavy, easy dirt to get off uh, safely to the floor without scratching the paint. So let me go ahead and finish rinsing off the car and then uh, we'll start with the soap. So now that all the heavy stuff is out, now we're gonna go ahead and this is the clean bucket. We're gonna start from the top to the bottom. And we're just gonna run the rag across the top. You can see all that stuff that's already gone. And we'll do it again. Also, you can see how much, how dirty this car is. Also, you see I'm kind of just pulling it along. I'm not pushing my hand to the floor. And this is actually a good example. So now that this fell on the floor, it's collected a bunch of dirt and rocks and stuff that if we put it back on the paint, it's gonna fall off. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out with the hose to make sure there's nothing in there. So you saw this fell on the floor, went ahead and hung it up for a second and hit it really hard with the hose slowly and I'm double checking just to make sure there's no rocks or anything in there. So as you saw what happened, if you drop it like that, do not just throw this back onto the paint because if you happen to hit a rock and catch it in there, then you will permanently scratch your paint. So, so like we showed here, we did our pass. Now we stick this into the orange bucket, which is our dirty bucket, and wring it out, which you'll have two hands to do this, but just so I could show you. So you wring this out with your two hands, and then now that all the dirt's out, and in this case, I'm doing it just because I know the dirt's out because I already cleaned this. Now you can dip it, in, dip it into your clean bucket and do the same process over again. Like I was trying to show you, I'm not putting pressure, squishing this down. I'm letting the little bristles on here do all the work. But again, I'm working from the top down dirt I'm catching on here. And you know, you're just monitoring it, making sure it doesn't get too dirty. Because in reality, this is what's doing all your work. This is what's doing all your cleaning. This is what's picking up all that junk. So you just repeat the process over and over and over until you're done with the whole car. Again, this is just to keep the scratches off the paint and keep that shine as clear as possible uh, so when you're driving around your car looks awesome so let me go ahead and finish the whole car and go from there All right, so now the car is completely washed and now it's time to dry it. 
So I'm gonna show you uh, one way to dry it so that it minimizes again the amount of scratches you'll get on the paint because now you did all the hard work to make sure that your mitt didn't scratch it, you did the two bucket method, you took your time and one of the other things too is uh, you notice the car is parked underneath uh, carport that's another key factor to making sure that the car doesn't uh, get dirty because when it's underneath the shade it buys you a lot more time to you know work on the paint uh, I've done washes in the sunlight early morning and even with it the sun coming up it makes a big difference on the amount of time you have to work with it so I know the paint looks awesome right now but it is completely dull from taking a beating from the sun so let me show you how to dry it off without scratching it even worse so I have a microfiber drying towel and make sure it's a drying towel so it you know absorbs all the water very simple I know we're used to getting the towel and wiping it all over to take off the uh, wet the wet paint or the water so here's a very simple way to do it now you're just going to go ahead and extend this fully out so like you see here full length and then you're literally going to block this all down until you have it nice and flat okay simple as that you're going to lift it up and you can see pretty much all the water is gone so going to kind of repeat the process over and over and over so what this is doing is that's why you want to make sure you get a nice microfiber towel that's going to absorb all the water but since I'm not moving this back and forth in case we did miss something in case we did get a piece of dust or dirt or something like that on here this is just picking it straight up so said you might have to take a couple passes over it but again this will minimize the amount of scratching done to your paint so let me go ahead and dry off the rest of the car and using this process and we'll show you one step after again if you really want to take it up a notch So the car's finally dry and I'll take you over the paint right now just so you can see how bad it is but so let's just say you dried it up and there's still like little water spots or uh, just well, wasn't 100% clean you know look for something called uh, a quick detailer and you just spray that on the paint take a clean microfiber towel and this is kind of like the last little step to ensure that the all the work you did was was really good so so that's your basic wash again you um you maintain the paint you'll you know you won't have to worry about you know the paint messing up over time also parking your car whenever you can underneath the shade or in a garage would be ideal but let me show you you know over 13 years so as you can see here the paint has completely failed here and this is from it just being in the sun and getting completely baked you see all the little imperfections and in the paint but you know this is going to happen over time that's why you want to make sure that you maintain the paint 
uh, make sure you do a wax on it. it all this stuff is just basic maintenance that you want to keep up over time especially with something like your headlights as you can see these are completely faded out I'll go ahead and show you in another video on you know getting that back to its normal shine because the front end of the car really just takes away from it it makes it look the car is old but it makes it look really old when you have your headlights faded up like that so if you have any questions comments uh, leave them uh, below or you know again just uh, any other tips or ideas that you've done that you've seen to help you out uh, this one wouldn't be considered like a full uh, detail detail this is really even though it might seem like it took a bit this would be your very basic wash for me I will make another video with the other car doing a full detail from a clay bar to to the wash to uh, the wax at the end of it and show you what other options you have so until next time again drop me a line any other questions uh hit me up thank you very much